going after Peterson for play calling in the red zone. Go for it. I'm with that. I Don't be scared of the negative outcome. Go for the positive outcome. And if you have a negative outcome, oh, you could have tied the game. Shut up, everybody. There's plenty of time to go in that game. Go for it. Don't be soft. I'm with that. I'm not even talking about that. Although, they didn't spread the, uh, they didn't once spread out the defense to give Hurts his best uh, option to punch in a score. They didn't once do that, right? But I, so I'm not talking about the play calling. I mean, just the decision to go for it. Anyway, Hurts' top wide out is out. Hertz puts up a 25.4 quarterback rating. Um, He was still too much of a threat to win that game for the Eagles. Still, they looked at him like, how's he doing? No good. Give him any weapons? No, we took them all out. Eh, kid's pretty good. Let's take him out. Well, what are we going to say? We're going to say that we want to see what we have in our third string quarterback. But wait a minute. We used our second round pick on this kid. This was the audition to see if we needed to draft another quarterback. Maybe we should see if in a primetime game with playoff implications, if not for the Eagles, at least for the rest of the NFC East, in a primetime game with none of his weapons available, can this kid actually get us a win? Wouldn't that tell you a lot about Jalen Hurts? Nah, they'll buy it. Trust me, at the postgame presser, I'm going to tell them. I'll tell them, you know, uh, I just wanted to see what Sudafed had. What's his name? Sudfield. (laughs) It's unbelievable. Here's what Peterson had to say about his uh, decision to take out Hurts with the game on the line. Pretty simple. Uh, the plan this week was to get Nate some time, and I felt like it was the time to, to get him in the game. Let me, let me be very clear. That was the precise moment when the Eagles lost every player in the locker room. Any lingering remnant of that Super Bowl win is gone forever. Again, down only three points. They pull Hurts. For Nate Sudfeld. If you want to know why they lost every player in the locker room, let me direct you to this. I brought it up on first take today. Watch Jason Kelsey's media availability from December 16th. Google it. Google Jason Kelsey, uh, K-E-L-C-E, right? Travis Kelsey's brother, the offensive lineman for the Eagles. Media availability, December 16th. Google it. It's absolutely worth your time. He he lays it out plain. This is not like basketball, he says, where one player is going to change your team. There are too many players on a football field. Too many things can happen. So it's not like, oh, LeBron James is there. Let's tank. It's not that in the NFL. And to go from nine to six, it's even more absurd. Or say go white side instead instead of DK Metcalf. Rieger instead of Justin Jefferson. This is the same guy who took these guys. Like, he's passing up better players for worse players earlier in the draft. You think by moving up early. He's, I told you he's better off at nine. Let someone else make that mistake and have a better player fall to him. How much confidence could you possibly have that Roseman, who also signed Wentz to the worst contract in the entire league, would actually make the right pick at six? To be clear, zero Pro Bowl players since Wentz, now in year five. And is one tenth of a point better than Sam Darnold. And that's it. Otherwise, he's dead last. Jeffrey Lurie, the owner of the Eagles, needs to fire these guys immediately. And by the way, I don't say that lightly. I know this is how they make their livelihood. But I have to be honest with you about what I would do if I were the owner. Because that locker room, go listen to Jason Kelsey, media availability, December 16th. That locker room needs to understand that unlike his coach and GM, the owner values culture and winning it's not just sour grapes from a Giants fan people although from a Giants fans point of view again I get it I would even get it I would hate it but in a way I would respect it as a dastardly kind of move if the Eagles were playing some other team not Washington not an NFC East team and by losing not only do they get to draft say Trevor Lawrence but they also keep the Giants out of the playoffs I get it I would just say, ooh, I hate you, Eagles, but I get it. But when you're playing another NFC East team and you have a chance to play spoiler to them head-to-head and the game's on the line in the fourth quarter 
And what's on the line is three draft slots up from nine to six? Dude, get out of here. Get all the way out of here. Ryan Clark joins me on the Goodyear Hotline right now. What's going on, Ryan? What's going on, man? How you doing, brother? Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you. Although in 2021 didn't get off on a great foot for me watching my Giants get bounced out of the playoffs <laughs> by that uh, Doug Peterson. In your experience as a player and as an observer of the game, can you remember a coach doing something quite like this? You know, I really can't. Uh, not in that situation and especially not with that explanation. To, to say this is a predetermined move because Nate Sudfield had been there four years and he deserves some snaps. That's not how the NFL works. You don't deserve snaps because you've hung around or because you've been great on the scout team. You earn your snaps and you earn your reps because of your play, because of your production, and he hasn't done that. And so to just make this choice arbitrarily, arbitrarily, you know, when you're only down three, after actually going for it on fourth down when you could have kicked the field goal and had the game tied, I think – Doug Peterson made a succession of questionable decisions in this game, and none more questionable than that. Talking to Ryan Clark on the Goodyear Hotline. By the way, I just gave them straight talk wireless, Ryan. No contract, no compromise <laughs> right before you got on. Uh, look, I, I, as a Giants fan, I was disgusted. But, like, as just a fan of football, like, if this is not baseball or basketball, I'm sorry. Like Stephen A. brought up on the air, what if you were for the process with Sam Hinkie? Isn't that the same thing? And da 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 da. A full contact sport um, where guys are battling in the trenches up on the, you know, in, in the front seven, let's say, and, and uh, on the line of scrimmage. The, that kind of physical battle when there are only 16 games in a season in a divisional rivalry, it's not like a regular season game in the NBA. I'm sorry. There is a difference. Is, like, where do you stand on tanking in football versus tanking in other sports? You know, I, I don't think players have the ability to tank. I don't think they necessarily know how. No, you can look at guys and go back to throwing games. The players aren't going to put the next draft in front of their independent contractorship. And what I mean by that is we're all playing for us, Max. And not only playing for you yeah. in the sense that you want a career, but to not get yourself hurt. Right, like If I'm running up tackling Derrick Henry, I don't know how to do that halfway. And so any opportunity that I get to go play, to play well, to further my career and win, that's what, that's what my main goal is. And you look back. Ain't no such thing as halfway crooks. <laughs> no such thing as halfway crooks, exactly. I don't know. So yeah, you got that reference. You, did, you hadn't listened to War. No, it wasn't War Report. What was it? It was, it was uh, only built for Cuban links. links. I listen to yeah, both of them because you of you. know Mob Deep. Yeah, I know Mob Deep, yeah, bro. Um, you know, man, yeah. so like you know Mob what he did was just inexcusable, bro. Uh, and it was just disrespectful to the game and to the players that legit put their lives and bodies on the line to play each and every week. Right. Yeah. Ryan Clark uh, on the Max Kellerman Show, ESPN Radio. You know what occurs to me? There was stuff going on in the NFL like Tom Brady's kept going to like forcing it to Antonio Brown. Because Antonio Brown had incentives in his contract. I don't like incentives in the NFL, Ryan. Like, to me, that's really a way, just a way for owners to get out of guaranteeing money to the players and retaining flexibility with payroll stuff. But in a team sport, like, Jason Kelsey's right when he talks about the kind of team sport it is. And in, in a sport like that, to put in, like, uh, performance incentives – based on stats that guys can compile, you get funky stuff at the end of the season, like we saw. Emmanuel Sanders celebrating was nice, but, you know, guys forcing the ball to a teammate to hit an incentive, it's, it's being a good teammate on the one hand to that one guy, but what about the rest of the team? Yeah, you know, and, and that's crazy, man. This is the first year I can remember uh, multiple instances going into the last week where you have this type of situation and, and guys actually hitting him. Three shovel passes to three shovel passes to Antonio Brown to, to, to get him over the number. Like, that, that, that's strange to me, but this is where we are in this league. And, you know, like you said, they put in incentives to get guys to a certain number or to have guys feel like this deal can be worked up to. And that's kind of where we are now, and those guys got them. But if it's not, you know, those two situations didn't seem to be at the detriment of the team, and I think that's something that you, you're happy for a guy he reaches – but if you're in a situation where you aren't giving a guy a ball or you are giving a guy to a ball, giving a guy the football too much and you lose the game because it or it puts you in a negative situation, I think that's more of an issue than forcing the ball 
to a guy late to make sure he gets his money. Ryan Clark on the Goodyear hotline. I like Goodyear because coming out for 2020, Goodyear is a perfect sponsor for 2021. A Max Kellerman Show, ESPN Radio. Ryan, I, I, this is like from my greatest hits volume four, right? When Mike Tomlin got the Steelers job, it was like, oh, Mike Tomlin got the job? What? And when he got up on that podium and said, because he's taking a job that like only one guy gets every like 10 or 20 years. And, and he said, Steelers football, run the ball, stop the run. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm, but this guy, he got me. You had me at hello. And um, I always bring that up when I talk about Tomlin and the Steelers. But when I'm watching Browns and, 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 and alternately watching the Steelers, let alone when they play each other, especially now, it's the Browns to me who found that identity. Whatever you think about the efficacy of their, of their um, uh, 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 run defense, at least that's what they concentrate on. They're going to they're gonna fight you up front on both sides of the ball, especially on the offensive line. They're going to run the ball, and they're going to stop the run. And I worry for the Steelers heading into that matchup um, in the playoffs uh, because they really can't block for the run at all. Your thoughts about the, your former team with whom you won a Super Bowl – the Pittsburgh Steelers, Ryan Clark. No, I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a good game. I believe that the Cleveland Browns have more of an offensive identity than the Pittsburgh Steelers do. But on the other side of that, the Cleveland Browns need to be healthy in the secondary. No Kevin Johnson this week, um, and so you look at where they were, Denzel Ward, where they were with COVID and the protocols. You don't know if those guys are back. I think they're better suited than the Pittsburgh Steelers to know where they want to go with the ball. But when you look at who the Steelers are, who they were early on in the season, they were a team that stopped the run, and they were a team that turned the football over. That's the only way for them to win, Max. If, if they don't dominate defensively, which we kind of haven't seen down the stretch, and, you know, turnovers are, are one of those things that kind of comes and goes sometimes with certain teams, then this team's going to be in trouble. Uh, I do believe that the Steelers can win the first game. I don't believe that they have what it takes to make a deep run. And it's for a lot of those things you said in kind of explaining why you feel more, but that, why you feel a little bit more strongly about Cleveland's identity than Pittsburgh. The other thing is, too, one of those identities is easy to carry over week to week. It's easy to make sure that you're physical. It's easy to make sure that you ha- continue to hand the ball off. You continue to pound the football. It's hard to say we're going to throw it 50 times and it's going to work every week when the dude playing quarterback isn't named Mahomes or Rodgers. I think that's very difficult, and that's what the Pittsburgh Steelers are trying to do, and I think that's playing with fire. Speaking of which, we didn't get to it on the air today. Maybe we'll do it later in the week on first take, but I think Patrick Mahomes actually heading into these playoffs is the guy with the most to lose. But when I, when I look at the AFC North, right, it's really interesting in terms of the quarterbacks. Like, you don't hear anyone taking the Browns to, to win the Super Bowl. And that's because Baker Mayfield's gotten much better, but he's not Josh Allen or Deshaun Watson or someone like that. Ben Roethlisberger is clearly faded. And when you look at the Ravens, that's the team where you'd be like, they could do it if, if Lamar can get it together in the playoffs. Where are you with the Ravens? In these, in in the in the a, 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 in terms of the threat out of the AFC North, I, I think the threat is real. Um, and, and if it's not the threat, Max, it sure is the fear, right? It's just the fear of shoot. What if they do get it right? What if Lamar continues to run the football like this? J.K. Dobbins continues to ascend, and that's kind of of what we were seeing. And they had some games to get healthy. And I don't mean necessarily get people back on the field but start to feel good again about their offense. It kind of started in that Cleveland game where we saw Lamar go back to the MVP Lamar where he's going to use his legs, his athleticism, more than he's trying to fit into the pocket and prove things to people outside of the Baltimore Ravens organization. And I think you have to be scared of this team. Derrick Henry is the best runner in football right now. The Baltimore Ravens, Ravens are the best rushing attack. And so we're going to get big on big, strong on strong in this game. And I think that the Ravens as a whole are more difficult to stop from running the football than Derrick Henry is. And so the Ravens can be very tough to beat, very tough to get out of the playoffs, and they're going to scare each and every team they play. And if they can get this first win and build some of that play on, playoff confidence in Lamar, you have to watch out if you're the rest of the AFC. Ryan Clark, ladies and gentlemen, you can check him out all over ESPN. Get up, first take, uh, NFL Live, he's all over the place. 
Ryan, appreciate you coming on as always, brother. Always talk appreciate to you, you, my guy. Yep. Thank you, man. Um, uh, Lamar, boy, he needs a win in the playoffs in the worst kind of way. In the worst kind of way. Meantime, is a former, a different former MVP set up to win another ring? By the way, Ryan Clark joined us on the Goodyear hotline. Goodyear, helping you discover the road ahead. Goodyear, more driven. Anyway, it's time for some straight talk. Look, we all drop our phones. It happens. The Max Kellerman Show on ESPN Radio, ESPN Plus, the ESPN app, Sirius XM Channel 80, and on your smart speaker. Aaron Rodgers has a message to the haters. You can reach me at 888-SAY-ESPN, 888-729-3776. The Max Kellerman Show is presented by Progressive Insurance. Meantime, Adam Gase has finally gone, Jets fans. Who you want to replace him? I'll tell you who you want. The Max Kellerman Show is presented by Progressive Insurance. Here's Aaron Rodgers, the MVP this season. Let's be Look, I think Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers... Those are the two best I've ever seen. I, if you, you force me to choose, I say Mahomes better than Rodgers at his best. However, Mahomes didn't play the last game. Not his fault. Like, you know, it's obvious why you sit him. But Rodgers did. Rodgers had a better statistical season than Mahomes. And Rodgers did it with less around him than Mahomes. So who wins the MVP this year? Aaron Rodgers. And he deserves it. And he's the only quarterback, honestly, I've ever seen actually where, where, where watching Mahomes now, I think, was that guy as good as Mahomes? It's very, like, Rodgers is incredible. This is, this is his mas- message to uh, Packers doubters. Idle chatter like that doesn't have a space in my brain. I'm not sure about everybody else. I can't speak for them, but seems to have gotten a little quiet around some of those topics that people wanted to make such a big deal about. Well, except that people don't believe in the Packers, not because of Aaron Rodgers. People don't believe in the Packers to make excuses for Rodgers. And by excuses, I don't mean Rodgers needs them. I mean explanations as to why he only has one Super Bowl win in his career, when for most of his career, he's, he's you know, spent season after season clearly better than everyone else. Like, way better. Till Mahomes came around, there were no, no one was really close to Rodgers. So when people don't believe in the Packers, it's not be, if there were uh, more players like Rodgers on the Packers, everyone would believe in the Packers. But look, the Packers drafted his replacement. They drafted his replacement at quarterback in the first round. That's rough, especially when you're coming off a 13-win season with a playoff win against Russell Wilson. You know what's, what's wild is, I like, I right now, because I liked the Saints before the season. Then I went and I said, you know, maybe Seattle once they dealt for Jamal Adams. Because even though they don't have a good defense, Seattle, I thought, but they have elite playmakers on defense. Bobby Wagner, Jamal Adams. These are not just, oh, he's a pro bowler. Though it's like, maybe that's the best guy in the, in the world playing his position. Real difference makers. So I thought maybe Ben don't break, and then in the moment of truth, they have difference makers. With Metcalf and everyone on, on offense for Russell Wilson, I thought maybe. And then, then I said, no, then the, the, the Saints made the move for uh, Quan Alexander, the linebacker from San Francisco. Uh, at the trade deadline, and their defense got really good. And with Drew Brees, because of the fractured ribs and the punctured lung with a, with a nice long rest, I thought, um, or at least not, not, you know, he didn't have to play tackle football for a while. I thought maybe he'll be fresher for the playoffs. I like the Saints. But not if they have to go to the Packers. Like, the Saints really needed that buy in the first round and especially needed to avoid a trip to Lambeau in the playoffs. So I do like the Packers to come out of the NFC now. But i got to tell you one thing. If all the favorites win in the first round, right? So just the favorites all win. Do you know who the Packers host at Lambeau for their first playoff game after their bye? The Tampa Bay Bucks. And if you recall, the Packers were on a roll early in the season. And that Bucks defense at Tampa smoked Rodgers. Remember Rodgers had like no interceptions, a million touchdowns, all of a sudden he threw two or three picks. And they lost. They got walloped. So I still like the Packers to beat the Bucks at Lambeau. It's not like going to Tampa early in the year. And the Packers have played better recently. But that's the toughest draw the Packers could get for their first playoff game would be Tampa. And 
if all the favorites win, that's exactly who they're getting. Meantime, in a very different neck of the woods, the New York Jets finished last in the AFC East at 2-14. And, and Adam Gase has been released by the Jets. What I mean, from his... I've never seen a guy where when you saw the introductory press conference, you said, what? And it's not like um, Steve Sarkeesian, um, who was a coordinator, obviously, at um, UCLA, uh, excuse me, at USC, he's introduced at a press conference, and he clearly, it seemed to me, was not sober for the press conference. And you thought, ooh, that's a bad way to show up, Sark. But I got to tell you, people loved Sark in L.A. You know, Trojans fans loved Sark. And so you understood, even if he was going through something at the time, and he made, made a, and from the press conference, oh, this isn't good. It's not like the idea itself was ill-conceived. Adam Gase, it wasn't like he had some special like love in New York, where they're like, oh, okay, he was a coordinator for you know Bill Parcells or something like. It was nothing like that. And he showed up to the press conference like that. Yo, from from jump, it was like this does not look good. And it turned out to be worse than that. So he's gone. Jets fans are like, good riddance. Who should, who should the Jets hire to turn Sam Darnold's career around? I, I don't think Sam Darnold, it, like, he's super young. Darnold is, I think Darnold is younger than Joe Burrow. Because Darnold, and yeah, I think he is. It's close. I, I have to look it up. But Darnold is young still. And, uh, yes, the, uh, you know, the, the issue with the Jets for me is the organization is so stinking. They haven't been relevant since Super Bowl three, think about that. Really, since Super Bowl three. Don't tell me the Chad Pennington years, please. Super Bowl three was the last time they were relevant. And New York is a giant's town, through and through. One of the all-time great football franchises, the New York football giants. Big blue. I'm going to digress a little bit. Oh, I love my giants. But the Jets are not the kind of franchise where, like, there are some quarterbacks who would be independently great. Like, I look at Justin Herbert now. I love the, that Chargers job for any would-be head coach. You're looking at Justin Herbert, and, and, and Anthony Lynn was the second-worst coach in football behind, you could say Doug Marone, but I, I would say behind uh, Adam Gase. And, and ju he had Justin Herbert and had the handcuffs on Herbert. Justin Herbert is one of those guys... I think independent of his situation, his floor is like Matthew Stafford if he stays healthy. That's a hell of a floor. And his ceiling is clearly much higher. And that's, that's a hell of a player. So I think if the Jets got a, their hands on a guy like that, if you think Trevor Lawrence is that kind of player, then you got to take that guy. But if Trevor Lawrence isn't available, and you don't think Justin Fields is that necessarily, or you don't think Justin Fields is going to be available... Then, then Sam Darnold is not the kind of talent where it's like independent of his surroundings, he's going to be great. And his surroundings will just determine how great. No. Darnold needs the right guy. Who's the right guy? Who's the right guy for Darnold? Stephen A. on first take today was suggesting Urban Meyer. But Urban Meyer, all he's done is quit. And he, like, he's super competitive, great football coach. But he's left two schools you know, scandalized. And then he just dipped. You, that's what the Jets need? For a couple of years, they're going to be, and then, and then the dude's going to dip? For that, if you're going to look, I, I, I was saying today on the air, if you're going to look at college, at the college ranks, in fact, you don't even have to leave Ohio State to find a better head coaching candidate to me for the Jets than Urban Meyer. It'd be Ryan Day. If anything, he's done better than Urban Meyer in the same place. But uh, at least so far. But I don't think either one of those guys is the answer. To me, the answer for the New York Jets is Eric Bieniemy. Bieniemy, like, how does this work nowadays? The offensive coordinator of the most dynamic offenses is the hottest guy. That'd be Bieniemy. That's who I'd be looking to, to approach if I were the Jets. Who do you want, Jets fans? 888-SAY-ESPN. Meantime, do... The Giants owe the Eagles a thank you card. Did I read that right, Raj? Is that the tease you just wrote for me? Do the Giants owe the Eagles a thank you card? I'm intrigued. No doubt, coming up. By the way, uh, Joe Burrow is six months older than Sam Darnold. ESPN Plus.
the ESPN app, Sirius XM Channel 80, and on your smart speaker. That's their best song. I don't care what anyone says. Then it, then it, then it, then it, spotty, opi, dope, delicious, appetite, what? What? Outcast, man. By the way, I like Outcast a lot. Although people from outside New York swear they're the greatest hip hop group. Everyone calm down. But Outcast is good. And that song is great. Turn that up, Raj. You see what Steph did, by the way? I'm going to get into that in a second. Reach me at 888-SAY-ESPN, 888-729-3776. No Doubt is brought to you by My Computer Career, training for a better life. <laughs> going to get right down to it. We got you covered. Let me tell you what I think of this. No Doubt. All right, there All right, it is. Right. Hey. I don't hear. I don't hear. Where there is, it is. Where's the track? There it is. All there right, check it out. Derrick Henry, you saw what he did. 2,000 yards this year. He's the most valuable non-quarterback player in the NFL. I can't believe that's even being asked as a question. He's that's not how you play. He's the top 100. Nah. Ah. There it is. I'd say no doubt or Nasan. Hold on, let me just <laughs> let me just uh, huddle with myself. Max, just remember, say no doubt or Nasan when he asks you a question. Um, Nasan, no. And Derrick Henry is, as of this moment, the most valuable running back because he stays healthy. Knockwood, that remains the case. Uh, he, he plays great when the lights are brightest, and he's a great running back. But if McCaffrey's healthy, you want him or Derrick Henry because I want McCaffrey. If Dalvin Cook is healthy, you want him or Derrick Henry, I'll take Dalvin Cook. That's two. If Saquon Barkley is healthy, give me Saquon Barkley. That's three. I'm for, if, if Kamara is healthy, I'll take Kamara. Right. Because it, the, the position running back, as Casey Joyner, the football scientist, points out on this show repeatedly, is about run blocking. So if you're not catching passes at an elite level as a running back, your main value is you save a roster spot because you're the bell cow. You don't need to use multiple backs as much. That, that guy can't be the, set, the most valuable non-QB in football. That would be a guy like Aaron Donald, right? A defensive dis- disruptor, someone like that. Uh, all right, fair enough. Hey, your New York Giants should send the Eagles a thank you card now that they have the 11th pick in the NFL draft. Y'all moved up. It's like a trade. Nah, wow. son. First of all, the Giants are not some great drafting team. <laughs> but secondly, if the Giants were in line for Trevor Lawrence, then I would agree. They kept the Giants from winning, good for them, and the Giants get the number one overall pick, and it just so happens in this season, that guy promises to be really special at the quarterback position. Yes, then yes. But moving up to 11, you got to be kidding me. A win is so much more valuable. You know what galls me, Raj? You know what galls me about this Giants What's thing? That? I'm going to get to it in the next hour. All right. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Hey, check it out. Steph Curry. Has to do with the playoffs matchups. Yeah. Okay. Steph Curry's got to stay white hot. White hot for the Warriors to even have a chance at making the playoffs. No, no doubt. doubt. And let me tell you something. I got, I'll, I'm going to tell New York this now. Imagine if Tom Brady had to face the Giants in the first round of the playoffs. Because Brady's it's Tom Brady, right? And here comes that Giants defense again because the Giants almost beat the Bucks the last time they played. Ooh, I'm so mad at Doug Peterson, Max Kellerman Show. Coming to your mornings. Is it over for Cam Newton? It certainly looks that way. I, want, I realize I can't do this with that battle. Dreams We're Mike Greenberg, moving to 10 a.m. Eastern, immediately following Keyshawn J. Will and Zubin. Tomorrow on ESPN Radio. Killer, killer that. Introducing Fidelity Income Planning. We- Fit sponsor for 2021. It's going to be a good year, everybody. After a very, very bad one. Who is this? That was that a bad year. Woof. Now, vaccines. Are, they got a vaccine plan they're trying to get together. Not doing the greatest job on that, even on a local level, let alone on a federal level. But nevertheless, there is a vaccine. That's amazing. We got lots of doses of it. Things are looking up. The NFC East. Um, speaking of depressing things, not well, I guess they're looking up compared to earlier in the season, but they finished the regular season in possibly the NFC eastiest way that they possibly could. Think about it. Washington rallies to beat the Eagles, but the Eagles weren't trying to win. I mean, they sat a lot of guys going into that game, 
And then Jalen Hurts, it turns out, is pretty good. And he wills them back into the game when it looked like they were rolling over and it was 10 nothing, and they weren't even trying. Hurts is like, uh-uh. <laughs> and then Doug Peterson's like, well, if Washington can't stop you, I'll sit you. I'll put in Sudfeld. Sudfeld. What's his name? Sudafed. And, but what are you going to tell him, coach, after the game? I'll think of something, but we got to get that number six pick instead of the number nine pick. Really, coach? Does, does, does the GM, Howie Roseman, have someone in mind? Oh, yes. Roseman has in mind to pass up on every good player in the draft to get a lesser player. <laughs> if we don't move up to six, Roseman can't pass on a better player in order to take a lesser player. <laughs> if, we, if we just stay at nine, that decision's made for us already. We must get to six so Roseman can pass on the next DK Metcalf or whoever, Justin Jefferson. We've got to get to six. Yeah, but maybe if we stay at nine, that guy will fall to us. That's just the problem. Don't you see? That's the problem. I mean, they, they sit, they, they sit Jalen Hurts in the fourth quarter of a field goal game and with the NFC East title on the line and have the nerve with a straight face after the game to say this, Doug Peterson? Pretty simple. The, the plan this week was to get Nate some time, and I felt like it was the time to, to get him in the game. Uh-huh. That was the time to get him in the game? In the fourth quarter of a game that got flexed to prime time? Think about the ripple effects in the NFL. To get Nate Sudfeld to look for a few minutes in the fourth quarter of a game. And by the way, you wanted to give him a look? He was awful. He couldn't calm himself down, and he was awful again. And you know what? You won't even consider that anything, because you already knew what you had. But I'm sure if you're a, a, an apologist for him on the team, you'd say, look, he just got into the game. He doesn't get any snaps. He doesn't get any time. He was a little overwhelmed by it. We need to, we need to look and get, you know, we can't just base, base our decision on that. Really? So what'd you put him in the game for? You know who you had to give a look? Jalen freaking Hurts, morons. Jalen Hurts! That's, when I, that's how I say Jalen Hurts when I'm really mad, Raj. So I'm beside myself. So right beside myself. I'm not even here. I'm over there. So raged. You give a look to the quarterback you drafted in the second round. You could have used that pick to move up to get a better receiver. You decided, we don't like Wentz. You were right. I told everybody. That's what the Eagles were thinking. You got the guy. Now you got to give him a look. Well, we've made up our mind about Jalen Hurts. Really? You don't want to see if he can actually win the game? You have the nerve to put in the third stringer? Let me show you the ripple effects. Okay, number one, you're, it's not like you're playing some out-of-division or conference opponent and you're screwing your divisional rival by not playing as hard as you can. I would understand if the Eagles are like, Haha, watch this, we're going to sit everyone against you know, some Carolina or someone who doesn't matter to you in order to stick it to our divisional rival Giants, keep them out of the playoffs, especially if we're going to move up to the number one pick. We're going to get Trevor Lawrence. Okay, I have to say, I tip my cap. I hate you. I hate your guts for doing it as a Giants fan, but I get it. You stuck it to us. But Trevor Lawrence isn't available for you. And you're playing a divisional rival. Trevor Lawrence is not available to you. You're only going to move from nine to six. You don't know how to draft anyway. You haven't drafted a single pro bowler in five freaking years. You're only moving up three spots in the draft. You're not getting a transformational quarterback. You believe you found your quarterback and Jalen Hurts. And now what else happens here? Well, you had a chance to keep but to play spoiler to a divisional rival head-to-head, -head, just beat the Washington football team. And you had every chance to do it. Not even talking about going for it on fourth down in the red zone. I like that call. How do you like that? See, I'm, you, a lot of times I'll be on the opposite of this argument. I'll say, I like the call to go for it. I'm not s sweating. I'm not shook like a lot of you, sweating a negative outcome. Go for it. Show some guts. Fortune favors the bold. I also don't sweat, oh, you can't tank. Uh, Trevor Lawrence is on the line. Trevor Lawrence, number one pick, someone like that. 
is 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 in the balance. Yeah, you could tank. You're not you're not playing a divisional rival that day. I get it. No match you can't ask. Shut up. See, I'm that guy. And I'm saying you can't do what the Eagles did. Because it was Washington head to head. And it had an implication for the Giants. And it was flexed to prime time. And I'll go on. Do you understand if they beat Washington? Now, neither Washington nor the Eagles are in the playoffs. My New York football Giants are. But do you know who the Giants would play in their first playoff game? Were, to they, were they to... Uh, no, no, who they would play in their first playoff game. The Tampa Bay Bucks. Would you like to see that matchup? I think the NFL would like that matchup. Tom Brady against here comes this Giants defense again. Could you imagine? And by the way, not to, I'm not saying the Giants would have beaten the Bucks, but they had a shot. When they met in the regular season, that was a close game. Giants probably should have won that game. Daniel Jones is getting healthier and healthier. And if you recall, in 07, when the Patriots were undefeated, Brady had his greatest season. All these weapons, right? Like he has now all these weapons. He had a great season this year. All these weapons he had just like then. Giants played him tough last week of the season. Just like they played them tough a couple weeks ago. And then beat him in the Super Bowl. I'm not saying the Giants would win, but they'd be live. Could you imagine the drama of Tom Brady either getting revenge on the Giants in the playoffs or the Giants doing it to Brady again? Gone. Out the window. Not going to happen. They flexed the game to prime time because of the playoff implications, and Doug Peterson spat in everyone's face. Not just Giants fans, football fans, and Eagles fans. L you have to go listen, Google Travis, not Travis, Jason Kelsey's media availability from December 19th. Google it, it's worth it. He talks about what that does to a locker room, what it means to try to win, to not tank in the NFL. How it's not basketball, where one transformational player is going to completely change your fortunes. How it's a, t a different kind of team game. Eagles are finished with this regime. And Jeffrey Lurie, the owner, if he wants that locker room to perform at all going forward, got to get rid of the coach, got to get rid of the GM. Or do me a favor, Jeffrey Lurie, because I'm a Giants fan. Keep him. Keep him. Let's see how that works out next year. Octavius in Oklahoma. You're on the Max Kellerman Show, ESPN Radio. Hey, hey, what's going on, Max? I, uh, Man, I'm just a big fan of yours, and I'm just saying this, not Thank to override you. you and your Giants or the Jets, but i got to go for the family, the Chargers. Eric the Enemy and the Chargers. What would that be had the Chargers already almost beat them with a rookie quarterback, but Eric the Enemy goes to the Chargers and – I well, if you're saying, hey, listen, Octavius, if you are saying, what's the if I were the enemy, where would I want to go? Chargers, easy. That's an easy choice. Even though Jacksonville has a hundred million in cap space, you heard Adam Schefter reporting that and everything. And even though they have a ton of draft picks, and even though they have the number one overall pick in the draft, and Trevor Lawrence is there, I would still take the Chargers, and I'll tell you why. Let's say Trevor Lawrence fulfills his potential as the best quarterback prospect since Andrew Luck. I don't mean that luck turned out to be the best. I just mean, as a prospect, the last time there was this kind of talk about a guy was Andrew Luck, okay? And let's say, in fact, he, uh, Trevor Lawrence is better than Luck. And, and by, as, at the, by the end of this rookie season, you go, yup, he's everything we thought he was. You know who he'd be? He'd be Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert, who didn't have the hype. A couple years ago, he had a lot of hype, but not recently. Justin Herbert is already where people would hope Trevor Lawrence would be in order to, to say, yup, it, that number one pick was justified. So it's, it's less of an unknown quantity or commodity in your quarterback. You have an historically special quarterback as a rookie in Justin Herbert. You have the LA market and you have a lot of talent on that team on both sides of the ball. Octavius from Oklahoma if you're saying, if I were Eric Bieniemy, where would I want to coach? Chargers. No doubt. Chargers. Over the Jags, over the Jets. Okay. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, I, I guess I got a little bit biased. My, my cousin, Joshua Kelly, and they, they haven't been playing him. So, I wish, you know. Ah, yeah. So, I see. You got family on the Chargers. 
All right, Octavius, this is getting to be awkward with the timing. I'm sorry, Octavius. It was an interesting thought. But to be honest, actually, I thought the call screener had already gone on to the next call. Raj is entering some fantasy uh, football team in instead of producing it, apparently. Which I, 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 listen, anytime someone's not doing their job because they're entering their fantasy team, I, I think they deserve a pass. Yeah. I think America would be a happier place if bosses and everyone understood that if, you're, if, if some worker isn't producing that's right. uh, because they're playing fantasy sports, you've got to give them a pass on that because that's a good expenditure of time. <laughs> I think we'd be a happier country if everyone understood that. Mitch in New Jersey, you're on the Max Kellerman Show, ESPN Radio. Max, happy and healthy new year. You um, too, Mitch. I think the Chargers will be the most interesting team. They have a great offense. Quarterback, they're gonna have a quarterback that's gonna be starting for the next dozen years. I would think. Uh, I hope the Chargers can go get Brody. I think his name is Brady. He's a quarterback guru. I hope he doesn't be like uh, gay, gas, gays. Uh, the Jets. Good luck with where he goes. Joe Brady. Yeah, is it Joe Brady? You're talking about Joe Brady. Right. Well, I'm, we, not, I'm not sure, Mitch. I'm not sure who you're talking about. Um. Tarek in New York. You're on the Max Kellerman Show, ESPN Radio. Hey, what's up, buddy? How you doing? Go ahead, Tarek. Uh, uh, I heard what you said about Vienna becoming the Jets. I'm a huge Jets fan. I would actually love it, but I think a better chance... Sorry, sorry for your troubles. Uh, Brian Dable from the Bills, offensive coordinator. The Bills head coach, mm-hmm. McDermott, is a Belichick defensive... Belichick guy, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, and the Bills uh, coach, is a, uh, McDermott, is a defensive guy. So that offense is all Dable and making Josh Allen look good, and obviously they added talent around Josh Allen, whereas the enemy has Mahomes and he has Andy Reid, so how much is it actually the enemy? You know, with, with the Bills... Well, you I mean, all- listen, I, I think that... I, I hear what you're saying, but I think usually the way it works in the NFL is we assume that if the offensive coordinator... That we look at, like, who's the hottest coaching candidate? The offensive coordinator for the hottest offense. That's normally how it works. And, in fact, there's been... A lot of talk about one of the issues in terms of the pipeline of talent in in terms of diversity for head coaching positions is that offensive coordinators in particular, there are few African-Americans in those positions. And here we have one. And it's interesting how that guy, it's kind of like, well, because it's not like Tarek's the first guy to say this. Like, well, yeah, he's got Mahomes and Andy Reid's really the guy. I don't know. Uh, it seems to me, if I like, if I, I agree, the Jets, I don't think would get them because it's not the most attractive job. But if I were the Jets, I would want the enemy. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, uh, it's not a it's not a bad idea to get someone off the Belichick coaching tree nowadays, right? Ten years ago, maybe not, but increasingly they're having success. Andre in Massachusetts. How you doing, Max? Thanks for taking my call. Yeah, yeah Belichick's uh, assistants are having uh, greater success. But that's not the way that the New York Jets need to go, in my opinion. It's time uh, for the Johnson family to do right by the fans of the uh, great city of New York and also New Jersey. For me, like the other callers, I like Dayball, what he's done with the Bills, especially that statement win, putting up 56 points, letting people know that he's a head coach. The enemy, let's stop all this nonsense about giving credit to Mahomes. As you said, Dayball's getting all this credit for Josh Allen. But for me... In terms of what Ryan Day did this weekend at Ohio State, uh, he's a man who's ready for the big chair and all that stuff. That does. Well, I, listen, I agree. If you're going to go to college, I like Ryan Day a lot. Like Stephen A. was talking about Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer's left programs scandalized, and then he skips town. Scandalizes the program, or at least he's under his watch they're scandalized, and he skips town. Ryan Day took over from Urban Meyer. Oh, it's Urban Meyer's team. He's having little, if anything, you would say, have they gotten better or worse? Better under Ryan Day, I would say. And he's younger. Like, when you get that head coach, you want an ascending guy. He's got experience. So I agree with you if you're going to the college ranks. Dable is interesting, too, because you keep say, people keep saying the Bills, but he's really a Belichick guy. Like, his first job in the league is with, was with the Patriots and then moved up in the Patriots organization before he went to the Bulls. Sorry, the Bills. Browns uh, clinched the team's first playoff berth since 2002. I, I feel good for Browns fans. I got to tell you that the Browns still have their franchise. It's a different team, but they – let me explain what happened. The Browns up and left town, right? Browns fans were so upset, the dog pound. It's a true story that act, it was an actual grassroots movement. There's something called grassroots and there's something called astroturfing. 
right? AstroTurf is when corporations put money in to make it look like a grassroots movement. Grassroots is really the people moving. And it was an actual grassroots movement in Cleveland by, by dog pound guys, right? By guys who were diehard Cleveland fans saying, wait, we, we can't lose our franchise. They actually got the league to give the town a franchise and with it, the history of the original Cleveland Browns franchise. So even though technically it's not the same franchise, it kind of is because they got to keep the history. That's a fan base that deserves, and they've been there through thick and thin, and it's almost always thin. I mean, that, that, that town deserves a football team. That's a football town, and they got it. They got it. Longest playoff drought in the NFL, and they beat the Steelers, the big brothers in the division, to get there in a close game, in a tough game. And it sets up a wild card game against rematch with the Steelers in Pittsburgh. You got faith in the Browns? I think they're going to win. Uh, to me, the run the ball, stop the run team is the Browns. Then you say, well, the quarterback. I'd like the Browns quarterback more than the Pittsburgh quarterback right now. I don't trust the Pittsburgh quarterback to throw it down the field. He'll get out of it. He'll get rid. It's so funny what happened to Roethlisberger. It really is like sometimes you see a pitcher like with a great fastball in Major League Baseball, and actually they age better. Bill James wrote about this years ago. Everyone thinks like the crafty lefty ages so well. Not usually, because that guy is already where the other guy is going to evolve to. So once he loses a tick on the fastball, what's he do to compensate? He's already, already only throwing 89, 90 miles an hour, right? The guy with a 100-mile-an-hour fastball can learn how to pitch eventually, and he can have a really long career. That was Roethlisberger. Roethlisberger was a guy who held on to the ball, who tried to make it happen with a big arm, right? Extend plays and, and, make, and, and take hits and make it happen. He turned this year, he transformed himself into that old pitcher who's getting by with Kraft now. He, he gets rid of the ball lightning fast, but he doesn't throw it down the field anymore. Now, I understand you need outside threats to throw it down the field. But, and you need an offensive line to give your guys time to get down the field. And you need a run game. But I think Roethlisberger's lack of arm at this point in his career is hurting the run game. And I actually have more faith in Baker Mayfield the way he's been ascending recently than I do in Roethlisberger at this moment. I know what that sounds like. It's such a huge game. Because with the, oh yeah, the Browns won, but with the chips on the line, can, can Cleveland go to Pittsburgh, go to the big brother in the division, and actually beat them in the playoffs? Can can. Baker Mayfield and that defense and that run game beat Ben Roethlisberger and Mike Tomlin and that defense. I like the Browns to win. Max Kellerman Show on ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Drivers who save with Progressive save over $750 on average. Rams better off without one of their highest profile players. It's time for some straight talk. Look, we all drop our phones. It happens. You fumble it, crack it, splash it. Well, straight talk wireless. Now walk like, hey, don't fall for the old back, play the backup talk. Or is it, nah, this is the NFL. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're the, the shiniest, shiningest star in the league. If you're Kurt Warner, league MVP, and you just get hurt, and then you get healthy. But in the meantime, Mark Bolger won eight in a row. Guess what, Kurt Warner? You'd never get the job back think about that for a second Kurt Warner was not drafted one overall and, da, 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 and disappointing some fans of the Rams Kurt Warner was a guy who earned his spot became arguably the best player in football like he was the MVP is considered by some the best player in football at his best gets hurt comes back he's still Kurt Warner but because the backup Mark Bulger won eight in a row, they're like, mm, you know what, Kurt? <laughs> we just don't want to mess with this right now. We're winning a lot. Think about that. The NFL is the only sport like that. There is no other sport like that. Nope. Even when people say you got Wally Pipped, Wally Pipped complained he had a headache. He was an all-star caliber but before the, the all-star game existed, I believe. But uh, first baseman for the New York Yankees had a headache. Lou Gehrig comes in. Wally Pipp never gets the job back. Lou Gehrig sets the record for consecutive games played, you know, that he's the first baseman. But Lou Gehrig was a highly touted amateur star out of Columbia University when called the, the collegiate Babe Ruth. Like, he was 
highly touted. In baseball, it doesn't usually happen that way. In basketball, it doesn't happen that way. And established starters just lose their job to a guy you no know, one's ever heard of. In football, though, Jared Goff is the number one overall pick in the draft. He's already been to a Super Bowl. Is the quarterback one of the better teams in the NFL? And a guy who couldn't stick with the Jets. Wolford couldn't stick with the Jets. Might take his job? Is that what you want, L.A.? 888-SAY-ESPN? Is it one of these Mark Bolger situations? You might even look back and say that was a mistake because Kurt Warner still had plenty of football left in him. But the Giants had drafted Eli number one overall. And Kurt Warner winds up in Arizona. But balling in Arizona. So is, is it one of those deals where, hey, this is the NFL, stuff like that happens? Or is this one of those... Most popular dude in town is the backup quarterback deals. 88 say ESPN. The Max Kellerman Show is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests join me on the Goodyear Hotline. Anyway, so with uh, Walford, the Rams beat the Cardinals. A lot of people like the Cardinals to upset them no matter who was starting at quarterback for the Rams. Like the matchup. But the Rams are back in the playoffs. So what do they do? Do they ride the hot hand? By the way, Walford set a record. First quarterback ever in his first start to throw for 200-plus yards and rush for another 50-plus. Wound up 231 yards through the air, 22 of 38 quarterback rating of 74.7 QBR sorry what is it QBR QBR of 74.7 rating of 64.7 that doesn't make any sense Raj Raj gave me some stats but you know with Raj sometimes numbers wind up upside down inside no I thought those make sense to me I got them from Raj.com they look good to me oh Uh Raj.com yeah 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 oh excuse me yes according to Raj.com that is probably correct accuracy is not our strength but you get some stuff there (laughs) (laughs) yeah who needs accuracy (laughs) Here's Sean McVay. Now, here's your head coach, L.A., who's been to a Super Bowl with the number one overall pick in the draft, Jared Goff, being asked about the starter for next week. Is John Walford the starter for next week? You know what, we'll, we'll talk about that, but I thought he did a great job today, Bill. He made plays, you know, really, I, I know there's guys around him that are capable of making some of those, and I expect those guys to be able to do that, but I thought he really gave us a chance offensively with the, you know, the amount of plays that he made in the past game with his legs, athleticism, being able to extend things. I thought he was outstanding against a really tough defense that uh, came ready to go, and I was really pleased with John. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's your head coach saying, not saying, come on, come on. Goff's our quarterback, but we know John's ready to play if and what he said. We're not talking about that right now. Dude! When the head coach says that, do you know what you have? Do you know what you have heading into the playoffs? A quarterback controversy. Sorry. Could you imagine Andy Reid saying, because Mahomes didn't play last week of the season, and let's say the Chiefs would have won somehow. Uh, who are you starting next week, Coach? Uh, well, listen, they both, you know, we, I, we have two options at quarterback. <laughs> Jared Goff is supposed to be one of those guys. That's why you draft him first overall. That's why you give him $100 million. Even if you think Mahomes is overdoing it. Well, who are the top five quarterbacks in football, really, at this moment? Mahomes is one. Rodgers is two. And Rodgers is the MVP this year. If you want to flip the order, okay, I would disagree with you. But I'm saying Rodgers had the most valuable overall season because he played more games and all that stuff. But I would say Mahomes is one and Rodgers is two or one and one A. And now who are you getting to? The way Deshaun Watson's played this year, especially in the second half of the season. The way, same thing about Josh Allen, especially recently. Russell Wilson, I know it was up and down in the second half of the season, but you want to ask me for my, say Mahomes, then Rodgers, then Russell Wilson. I'm still going to give him the benefit of the doubt over the young guys who aren't Mahomes. And then Watson and Allen. I would go one, two, three, four, five like that. Jared Goff is, even if he's not one of those five, could he be the next guy? 
guys, he's not. He's not the sixth best quarterback. I, I got another one for you. He's not the se- he's not the best quarterback in L.A. Who'd you rather have, Justin Herbert or Jared Goff? Come on, that's like a trick question. Like, was that a trick question? Of course, Justin Herbert. But here's what's brutal. He's not only not the best quarterback in L.A., when the coach talks like that, that's like the coach saying, I'm not sure he's the best quarterback on this team. You gave him $100 million. $100 million. And he's not bad. I don't think Jared Goff's bad. I think Jared Goff's pretty good. I think he's better than average. I think he's high average. You, you talk about, like, take 32 teams, so 32 starters. I'd say um, Jared Goff is better than the 16th starter. I'd have to list them all, in my head, you know, but I, my guess is I'd have him higher than 16. It's not bad, but it ain't good enough. Not with, you know, I've been killing Wentz, especially when he started regressing based on that contract. I also say careful giving Dak the money. Dak is better than both those dudes. Now I think it's safe to say Dak is the best of the three. And I still say careful. Look what happened to Dak. Wound up getting hurt. Well, it's not well, best ability is availability. But Goff, damn, that's gangster of McVay. That's the NFL, man. Walford couldn't, couldn't make it on the New York football Jets. Got cut from the practice squad of the Los Angeles Rams. And here he is creating a quarterback controversy for a team that has title chances. By the way, Steph is going to have to do what he did or some version of that for the Warriors to be successful. But is he going to have to do that every night for the Warriors to really have a shot this year? I'm going to get into that in a second. Among the many abuses of Doug Peterson was that not only was it a primetime game and he and it's like, wait, this got flexed to primetime. Try to win the game. Not only did he not try to beat a Washington team, not only are the Giants not going to play the Bucks and all that stuff, but I didn't watch the Warriors. Steph went for 62. I didn't see the game because I'm watching football, Doug Peterson. <sighs> anyway, hindsight is 2020. Uh, 2020 was a brutal year with a lot that we seemed like we couldn't control, right? What can we control? Our job, our career. In 2020, my computer career helped more people start IT careers than ever. 